This effect took months in order to actually pull off. We had to get so many different special city permits. We had to shut down all the streets below us just to make this actually safe. And today I'm gonna to show you how to pull off this same effect inside of After Effects. This effect was a super fun one to pull off, and in order to actually do it, there was two main parts to it. The first part is the building unfolding animation, and the second part is the compositing myself into the shot. And we're gonna go over both of these, but the easiest part of it was actually the building animation, because this is a new template here at Motion Array, where all of the hard work is done for you, and I've left a link to it down below if you wanna check it out for yourself. And I'd suggest doing that because then you can follow along with me and I'll show you how to get the most out of it. Then once we've created this building animation together, I'll go over how I composited myself into the shot, some things to keep in mind while filming, and how to use AI generative fill to really sell the final result. P.S. This is gonna get so much easier as soon as Adobe releases their new version of AI generative fill into Premiere and After Effects. So make sure to subscribe because we're gonna let you know as soon as that happens and give you a full breakdown once that actually comes out. But first things first, let's open up this After Effects template and we can see that right off the bat here, the actual animation is already complete. And on top of that, there's nine different options of different scenes that we can use with different buildings, different camera angles and vantage points. And what's cool is that all I have to do to make this my own is just go to the edit folder. And now there's a bunch of different options for elements that I can change. But the easiest one to start with is to go to the text option down here under the text folder. And let's go with scene 01 because that's the scene that I've got pulled up right here. Now, if we double click on this composition, we can see the mock-up here and changing the text is as simple as double clicking on it and typing in what you want it to say. So for example, what I wanna do is make mine say inside of After Effects. And then I'll actually just hide this other text line here because this is all that I want mine to say. Now, if I go back to our previous composition, we can see that the changes update in real time. Now, if that's all that you wanted to do is just change the text, then that's cool, but there's a lot of other options for things that you should know about. First of all, there's an option here for media. And the cool thing about this is that you can place down video footage inside of this empty space here, and it'll appear naturally integrated into this empty space behind your text. This gives you a lot of different creative options, especially, for example, if you use one of our motion graphics of objects being constrained in a tight space. So for example, I'll take this one here of some hearts expanding and then line it up so that the edges of the video match up with the edges of the composition. And then when we go back to our main composition, it looks like those hearts are actually expanding inside of the building, further selling this whole effect. But the other thing that's cool is that if you have some motion graphics on an alpha channel with a transparent background, then if you place down those, then it'll actually create a shadow behind them, further selling this whole realistic 3D effect. And then if we wanted to dive into color, you can control a few other parameters, but a really cool one is to make everything monochromatic. The question is, why would you wanna do that? You'd wanna do that because it makes stuff inside of the building reveal remain in color, which really directs people's attention directly here. It just makes the effect pop a little bit more. But even though these are super easy to use out of the box, I think my favorite application for these is how easy they are to incorporate into a larger scene. So now let's go into how I created this opener where it looks like I'm actually standing on top of the building. Spoiler alert, I didn't actually stand on top of a 20 story building and put my life in danger. So how did I actually pull this off? First things first, I wanted to have an idea for what I actually wanted to do before I just started messing around with stuff. Like for example, my original idea was to film myself in an actual real building in the foreground and then to mask it out so that it looks like a part of the scene over here. But then I thought it would be so much cooler if I was on top of the building and then actually causing the animation to start up. But those two ideas require completely different approaches and a completely different filming setup in order to capture the footage. So it's gonna be a whole lot easier to get what you want if you go in with a plan as opposed to just winging it. So the first thing I wanna do here is actually stabilize the shot so that there's no motion. This is gonna make the entire process of compositing myself into the scene a million times easier. So I'm gonna add this scene to a new composition just to make things easier to work with. And then we're going to highlight the same layer and go over here to track, stabilize motion. I'm gonna solve for position, scale, and rotation, which is gonna create two separate connected boxes. Now, in order to perform the stabilization, you're gonna to wanna to choose areas of high contrast that are stationary within the scene. And any of these buildings here are actually the perfect setup for us. Lots of different segments of high contrast that are staying perfectly consistent. So I'm gonna make sure that my playhead is at the very beginning. Then I'm gonna place my markers here and here, and then press the play button to analyze forwards. And I'll go make myself a coffee while this is all happening in the background. Once it's done, you can hit apply. But if you have any other layers in your composition here, you're gonna just wanna check to make sure that your edit target is set to your scene layer, just in case. Now, when you hit apply, you should notice that your scene is completely stationary. But you should also notice that there's these black edges around that pop into the frame because we're actually moving the scene around to compensate for the movement 
which brings in the empty edges of our frame. Now, before I go fixing the edges of the frame, we're actually far enough along that I can start filming. And the biggest thing to make sure of is that I was filming myself at the same angle that our camera would be looking up at this part of the building here, which is where I wanna put myself. So for me, that meant finding something that I could stand on that was over top of the camera where only the sky would be in the background. What this lets me do is not have to worry about cutting myself out of the shot like on a green screen, but instead just blend the sky in my footage with the sky in the template, which is a whole lot faster and easier to do. Plus it ends up feeling more realistic because I'm actually interacting with more parts of the scene that I'm in. After doing a little scouting, I found these concrete blocks that ended up working perfectly. So after I got a couple of takes, I brought that footage into After Effects and roughly put it in the correct position and then masked myself out so that it looks like my feet are actually dangling a little bit over the edge, helping to sell the effect a little bit more. So now this is where we use the power of I have an entire video about how to use AI generative fill to enhance your videos, and the link to that's in the description below. But in order to save time, I'll also go through a lot of that information in this video. We get to export a frame here by going up to composition, save frame as, and save this as a transparent PNG, making sure that RGB plus alpha is selected. Also, make sure to make a note of exactly which frame it was that you saved that still frame on. And the easiest way to do that is by adding a marker to this layer. So for me, that's the star key on my number pad, but if you don't know what yours is, you can just hit Control, Alt, Apostrophe, and you can search up what your marker shortcut is set to. Once that's in place, we can bring this into Photoshop and start to do a little bit of blending. There's two main things that we want to accomplish here. One is that we want to fill in all the empty spaces around the edges here, not only so that we get rid of the empty edges of the frame, but we also want to add in a little bit more just so that we have a lot of room to zoom in and out and move around. But then the other piece is that we wanna blend this top section here with the video footage of myself so that everything feels like one cohesive unit. And that's gonna mean using generative fill to select the edges of high contrast and just blend these all together a little bit. But that's also going to mean adding elements to the top of the buildings here that are cut off. Some of them were a little bit pixelated as well, so if they didn't look quite good enough, I could also just erase them and replace them. Now that I've got something that I really like the look of, I'll make sure only the generative fill is showing. I can export it as a PNG with transparent background, and then bring it back into After Effects, making sure that I'm on the same frame that I was before. This is where that marker comes into play. And now when I drop this photo in on top, it blends everything together super well. Now, the final step is to add a null layer and parent both the scene and the generative fill extension to that null layer. So now if I increase or decrease the scale and change the positioning of the null layer, it changes the whole scene as a unit and everything is still blended together perfectly. This will help you to be able to adjust the sizing or the positioning if you wanted, which in my case looked like zooming all the way into myself up here and then slowly zooming out to the default settings. But to really sell the effect and make it feel like I was standing on top of this building, I added in some ambient city sound effects like car horns and engines revving and even a little bit of ambient wind noise just to make it feel like I'm really high up. And I got all these from motionarray.com and the final result is not only something that looks like one cohesive scene, but it's also got some animation happening that would be impossible to do in real life. And it's also way too challenging for me to do personally in CG. I am genuinely afraid of programs like Blender and Cinema 4D. So I love having an option where the template does all the hard work for me. So if you wanted to download that for yourself, like I mentioned, the link to that is in the description below. And you can check that out as well as this video where I go over how to use AI generative fill to really enhance your videos. I'll see you over there.